ماشاء اللہ بڑا بہترین کلام پڑھ رہے تھے اگر ٹائم ہوتا تو انشاء اللہ اور سنتے ہیں مگر واقعی قلت کے باعث یہ نہ پوچھ کہ کیا حسین ہے یہ نہ پوچھ کیا حسین ہے میرا مدعا حسین ہے اور کیا بتاؤں کیا حسین ہے کیا بتاؤں کیا حسین ہے فضل کبریا حسین ہے اور مرتضی کا ہے وہ شہکار مرتضی کا ہے وہ شہکار اور آل مصطفیٰ حسین ہے آل مصطفیٰ حسین ہے اور کربلا نے دے دیا ثبوت کربلا نے دے دیا ثبوت کہ دین میں کھرا حسین ہے دین میں کھرا حسین ہے اور کربلا کی وہ آخری نماز کربلا کی وہ آخری نماز کر گیا ادا حسین ہے کر گیا ادا حسین ہے اور خلد انہی کی ہے ملکیت خلد انہی کی ہے ملکیت جن کا مقتدا حسین ہے جن کا مقتدا حسین ہے اور کیسے ہو سکے گا فنا اور کیسے ہو سکے گا فنا کہ دین کی بقا حسین ہے دین کی بقا حسین ہے اور آخری شعر ہے کہ بات بس اتنی ہے مختصر بات بس اتنی ہے مختصر ایک یزید تھا اور حسین ہے ایک یزید تھا اور حسین ہے اب ہم آگے چلتے ہیں اپنے پرگرام کو لے کر ہمارے اگلے مہمان مقرر انگلیس بیچ میں ہمارے بیٹ فور سے آئے ہوئے مہمان محترم جناب امام افسن حسین میں ان سے ملتمس ہوں کہ وہ آئیں اور میں چاہوں گا پور زور نعرے سے آپ ان کا استقبال کریں نعرہ تکبیر نعرہ رسالت شہدائے کرب و بلا حسین ہے حسین ہے نبی کا نور این ہے حسین ہے حسین ہے نبی کا نور این بسم اللہ بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمدللہ رب العالمین وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أحسب الناس أن يتركوا أن يقولوا آمنا وهم لا يفتنون صدق الله مولانا العظيم إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا سلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا ومولانا محمد وبارك وسلم وصل عليه صلاة وسلاما عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا سيدي يا رحمة للعالمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم after praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending salutations, peace and blessings upon the best of creation, the jewel and crown of creation the beloved of Allah Almighty, the coolness to our eyes, the purpose of our lives the reviver of our hearts, the inspirer to our minds the awakener of our souls, the most honored one, the most praised one the most generous one, the most kind one undoubtedly he is the most beautiful one none other than Sayyiduna Muhammadur Rasulullah Sallallahu Ta'ala Alayhi Wa Ala Alihi Wa Ashabihi Wa Barak Wa Sallam 
Firstly, I'm very pleased when I read or I see that in our Muslim communities, our Sunni Masajid come together collectively and they, at the start of Muharram, up until the 10th of Muharram al-Haram, at the start of Rabi'ul Awwal, up until the 12th of Rabi'ul Awwal, throughout the month of Ramadan, and I hope that also at the start of the month of Hajj up until the 10th of Dhul Hajj that the Masajid come together, the Sunni Masajid and they host programs every evening for our local community to benefit and learn from. And here in Rochdale, MashaAllah, it's good to see this unity amongst our Sunni Masajid that every night a different masjid is hosting and inviting the locals whether in that immediate locality of this masjid like here in Spath or whether it's Golden Masjid or whether it's Bilal Masjid or other masjids to come together like this so that we can educate our youth more than educating our elders I say that because for decades now, our elders have heard what I'm going to preach and what has been preached before. It's just a reminder for them. But for the youngsters who are sitting here, it may be the very first time that they hear and they learn about Sayyiduna Hussein or they learn about the virtues of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or they learn about how to improve and better themselves according to the Quran and Sunnah. So huge respects to this community here with respect to this. MashaAllah, as a Mulana Allama Ari Abid Jisti Sahab, Zida Majdu, who has arrived, the chief speaker of tonight. We welcome him with takbir and nara. Nare takbir, nare risalat, nare risalat. Ulamai Ahl Sunnah Dudu Shif Pari Allahumma Salli Ala Wa Ala Ali Sayyidina Wa Mawlana Muhammadin Wa Barik Wa Sallim Wa Salli Alayhi Sayyiduna Imam Hussain His martyrdom and the background leading up towards it That is the topic of discussion for tonight And I seen on the generic poster the love of the Ahlul Bayt and the companions and other topics have been discussed and will be discussed. Truth is that I would need at least a couple of hours to go through the entire life of Sayyidina Hussein from the start till his blessed martyrdom. And if anyone wants to listen to it in English, the entire Waqi of Karbala in English then you can simply go on YouTube and type Imam Asim and Karbala and there's a good three and a half hour lecture on what happened in Karbala in the English language in great length and detail I only have 25 minutes left I don't think I'll be able to summarize and concise uh, the entire Waqi of Karbala in 25 minutes suffice to say that if we was to ask our youth who is Sayyidina Hussein Ibn Ali radiallahu anhuma many of our youth will give one sentence as an answer others will be able to string a couple of sentences for a few minutes some may even go longer than that sadly many of our youth they have not been taught or they do not know enough about Sayyidina Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu they don't know we know more about footballers we know more about England versus Spain on Sunday we know more about Conor McGregor and the amount of fights he's had or John Jones we know more about Imran Khan and politics and cricket we know more about the dunya and things which are not directly relevant to me and you that will not benefit us 
just it's a pastime from day to day it just passes time that's all it is but Sayyidina Hussein and knowing who Sayyidina Imam Al Hussein radiallahu an is is very important it is a pillar of your faith love of the Ahlul Bayt the household of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam to love them who, who is the house who are the members of his house sallallahu alayhi wasallam Sayyidina Fatima Sayyidina Ali Sayyidina Hassan and Sayyidina Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhum they are regarded and referred to as members of the household the prophetic household along with the blessed wives of the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam Sayyidina Hussein radiallahu an was born in the month of Sha'ban in the fourth year of Hijri in the month of which month Sha'ban in which year fourth year after when Hijri migration how old was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when Sayyidina Hussein was born? 57 years old, around, give or take. La, 53 is when they migrated to Medina Munawwara, add four years would equal? Khala, it's 57, I'm right. Sayyidina Hussein was born when Nabi alayhi salat was salams Blessed daughter, after a year after, or just under a year after giving birth to Sayyiduna Hassan. There are two brothers, Hassan and Hussein. Very famous brothers. They are the sons of Sayyiduna Ali and Sayyida Fatima. They are referred to and regarded as Sayyida Shabab Ahlil Jannah, leaders of the youth of paradise. The messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when they heard the news that Allah has blessed in their household Sayyiduna Hassan, a grandson, Sayyiduna Ali brought them to the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam, Sayyiduna Hassan, and presented to the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam, was a young baby, very small. And they asked Sayyiduna Ali, what did you name him? What do you want to call him? Ma samaytumuhu. What do you want to call him? And Sayyiduna Ali said, Harbun. Harb. I want to call my son soldier, warrior, fighter. Why? Because Sayyiduna Ali was the greatest warrior and fighter amongst the Sahaba. In Badr, he has the most kills. In Uhud, the most. In Khandak, he's the one. In Khaybar, he's, it's Sayyiduna Ali is the man. When it comes to the battlefield and in the sufuf of the Mujahideen, Sayyiduna Ali stands number one. There's no one like Sayyiduna Ali when it came to warfare, battle. I once asked Sheikh Yusuf Abu Snayna, the Imam of Masjid al-Aqsa, tell us about Sayyiduna Ali. And he mentioned the virtues we've read. And he said that I described to him, I described Sayyiduna Ali to you as the person you know, every army in the world, you have the general soldiers, then you have generals, then you have the special forces. You know, the best of the best fighters who can do anything and everything. He said, Sayyiduna Ali was one of them. He was the best of the best. Nobody was like Sayyiduna Ali in the battlefield. So he said, I want to name my son warrior fighter. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, La, don't name him Harbun, name him Hassanun. Name him Hassan, beautiful. The next year Sayyidina Hussein was born. They bought Sayyidina Hussein, said, what did you name your son? Ma sammaytumuhu. He said, I named him Harbun. Ya Rasulullah, I want him to be warrior, fighter. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, no, call him Husaynun. The little Hassan, ism tasgheer. Allahu Akbar. Hassan and Hussein. It is Sunnah in our tradition, Islam, that when a child is born, you put something sweet into their mouth. So normally what happens is your parents would have taken you to your grandparents, to your grandmother or your grandfather and said, you are elder, there's more barakah, more blessings. Take something sweet, choose some dates or some honey and put it into the baby's mouth, under the tongue. 
you know, at that time, they could have gone to Sina Abu Bakr, Sina Umar, Sina Uthman, or the Sahaba. Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Sayyidina Ali said, Ya Rasulullah, do the tahnika, tahnik. And instead, you, they didn't put some sweet date in the mouth of Sayyidina Hassan and Hussein. For at that time in the world, there was nothing more sweeter than the blessed spittle of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They put their blessed spittle Mubarak into the mouth. From their mouth into the mouth of Sayyidina Hussein. Sayyidina Hassan. Sayyidina Hassan and Hussein grew up in Medina Munawwara. They seen and grew up in the company of Sayyidina Abu Bakr, Sayyidina Umar, Sayyidina Uthman. They grew up with their father, Mula Ali radiallahu an. They seen Sayyidina Sa'ad, Sayyidina Zubair. They seen all the huge great Sahaba. Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam said about Sayyiduna Hassan, this grandson, that inna ibn hadha Sayyidun. This son of mine is a Sayyid. Sayyid here means leader. Through him, Allah will unite my ummah. There will be two groups in my ummah who will have difference of opinion and he will reconcile the two and make them one again. This son of mine, his mission and duty will be to unite the Ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The other son, Sayyiduna Hussein, it is well, very well documented that one day the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were in the house of the beloved wife, our mother, Sayyida Umm Salama, radiyallahu ta'ala anha. And they walked, it was midday, they came inside and Sayyiduna Hussein came running behind their grandfather came running inside and at that time the messenger of Allah was sitting and Sayyidina Jibreel had arrived and Sayyidina Jibreel would visit the Prophet daily this angel the best of angels he would visit every day and on this specific occasion when Sayyidina Jibreel he was with the Prophet and Sayyidina Hussein came running and jumped into the blessed lap. And then Sina Jibreel asked a question. Atuhibbuhu ya Rasulullah. Do you love him? O oh Allah's Messenger, do you love your grandson? And Nabi alayhi salatu was salam responded and said, Bala, of course I love him. And then Sina Jibreel said, that people from your ummah will kill him. So Sayyidina Hussein is very young. Nabi alayhi salatu salam is being told of what's going to happen in the future that people from your ummah will kill him. The messenger of Allah alayhi salatu salam was very saddened to hear this. And then Sina Jibreel asked, would you like if you wish that I instruct the angel to bring the land, the earth that he's going to be killed on, murdered on? Nabi alayhi salatu salam said, yes, bring it. So the angel was instructed to bring soil from Karbala. And they took this soil and they placed it into a bottle, Karura. After Sayyidina Jibreel left, and Nabi Ali Salat was salam passed this bottle on to Sayyidina Umm Salama and said, keep this. Keep this bottle with the soil inside it. Keep this with you. And know that when the color of this bottle changes, what's inside it, then know that my son Hussein has been killed. When the rem what's inside here changes, know that Hussein has been killed. So what we do we learn from here? The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam foretold the martyrdom and murder of Sayyidina Hussein. Nabi alayhi salat was salam gave the piece of land that they're going to be killed on to their wife Sayyidina Umm Salama and told her that when it will change, you will know that he's been killed. What does this tell you? That Sayyidina Umm Salama will live long enough for that time. And Nabi alayhi salatu salam knows how long she will live as well. Ilmul ghaib, knowledge of the unseen. They know Umm Salama will live this long. And they know that she will be alive when Sayyidina Hussein will be murdered. He will be martyred, he will be killed. And they know that it will change. 
And if I was to fast forward, Sayyidina Umm Salama narrates herself, she was alive. That when Sayyidina Hussein was killed, I seen the bottle and it had changed into blood. She was alive in Medina Munawwara when Sayyidina Hussein was martyred in Karbala, Iraq. So Sayyidina Hussein radiallahu an was told and knew from young age, from a very young age, how his life was going to pan out. So he's prepared mentally, he knows what his task and duty will be. So Sayyidina Hussein radiallahu an, they, like Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu an, he used to make a dua, Allahumma la tudrikni sana sitteen. Oh Allah, do not let me live long enough to witness the 60s. Sayyidina Abu Huraira used to say this. Sayyidina Abu Huraira was gifted and blessed with two types of knowledge. He was blessed with the knowledge of vast memory. He was able to memorize many ahadith through the dua and the blessings of the Prophet And also he was told secrets. He knew things as well. So he would always make this dua. Allahumma la tudrikni sana sitin. Oh Allah, do not let me live long enough to see the 60th year. It is said that he passed away in the 59th year of Hijri. Sina Abu Hurair radiallahu anhu. He passed away early. Before. When the people probed, why did he make this dua? Because he knew there will be a tragedy that will occur in the 60s. 60s Hijri. That he does not want to be alive to hear and witness. And there was no greater tragedy at that time than the martyrdom and the murder of the Ahlul Bayt by Yazid and his forces. So Sina Abu Huraira, Sina Hussein knows this. This is the background. He knows. He's growing up in Medina Munawwara knowing what's happening. His father is Mullah Ali radiallahu an. The Sahaba, the people know full well their position, their rank, their status. Hussein minni wa ana min Hussein. Hussein is from me and I am from Hussein. Ahabba Allahu man ahabba Hussein. Allah loves the one who loves Hussein. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would sit on the blessed member, the pulpit. Sayyiduna Hassan and Hussein will be at the back of the masjid. And both brothers are holding hands coming through the sufuf. And the Sahaba move away. When the Messenger of Allah leaves the member during khutbah, and they pick their grandsons and bring them back to the member. And they say that, I love them, O oh Allah. You love them. And all those who love them, you love them as well. Love those who love Hassan and Hussein. Allahu Akbar wa lillahi alhamd. Nabi alayhi salatu salam would lead the prayers. And Sayyiduna Hassan and Hussein would elongate the prostration, the sujood. The greatest of all sujoods. They would become long and the Sahaba would wonder, why? Why was today sajda longer than usual? And when they would ask, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa would respond and say that my grandsons were playing on my back. I didn't want to disturb them. So I allowed them to. And when they stopped, then I got up from sujood into Ka'da. Yani this is Sayyiduna Hassan and Hussein who is elongating who sajda? Sayyidul Kawnain sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. So Sayyiduna Hussein radiallahu an grew up in Medina Munawwara. They were only seven, eight years old when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam left this world. They lived during the caliphates of Sayyiduna Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman. They grew up in these khilafas. Remember, the Messenger of Allah والسلام, said that Al Khilafatu that the martyrdom or the caliphate will be Thalathuna Sana, thirty years after me. And the first Khalifa in Islam, the first deputy, the first man in charge after is who? Sin Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu an. Sin Abu Bakr radiallahu an loved, honored, respected the Sahaba, respected the Ahlul Bayt. After two and a half years of leading the Ummah, leading the Muslims, 
they left this world, Sayyidina Umar was appointed as the Khalifa. When Sayyidina Umar was appointed as the Khalifa, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he ruled for around 12 years. During his rule, when he would travel out to the other parts of the Muslim world, he would always shop for his sons. Amongst the shopping that he would do, the gifts he would buy, he would specifically buy gifts for Sayyidina Hassan and Hussein. There's a, a narration Ibn Asakir mentions in his tarikh that on one occasion Sayyidina Abdullah bin Umar was sat on the mimbar and Sayyidina Hassan and Hussein came and they said to Ibn Umar get off this mimbar this mimbar doesn't belong to you or your father. Sayyidina Abdullah bin Umar who's slightly older than Sayyidina Hassan and Hussein he went to his father and complained and said, Hassan and Hussein said to me, get off the member. It doesn't belong to you or your father. This is ours. And Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anh said, did they say this? He said, yes, they said this. He said, take me to them. Went to Sayyidina Hassan and Hussein and said, what did you say? They said, this member belongs to me and my grandfather. It doesn't belong to you and your son. Yani wasn't out of disrespect or to belittle. Meaning we have every right over this greater because we are the family as well. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu an said, write this down on a paper. Make witness. And they wrote it. And they, he said, I swear by Allah Almighty that I will hold this and stand by these words, Ila Yomil Qiyama Ibn Umar or my son. They are correct and not wrong in what they have said. That this member is the member of Hassan and Hussein. This is the member of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is Nabi alayhi. This is the love Sayyidina Umar and respect they had for the Ahlul Bayt. People want to create this disunity. They want to paint a picture and a story that the Sahaba did not get on with the Ahlul Bayt, the family, or the family did not like the companions. This is wholly incorrect. Where is the Ahlul Sunnah going when we are creating these? made up narratives that we are fighting and dividing ourselves because I am a more lover of the Ahlul Bayt than you or I love the Sahaba more than you do La hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al-ali al-azim We are the maslak, we are the way of i'tidal We are the way of moderation For us, we love the Sahaba and we love the Ahlul Bayt For us, we honor them both, we respect them both One without the other is incomplete Likewise, the other without the one is incomplete. You have the Ahlul Bayt, who are the Safina to Nuh. They are the means and transport for you to reach your destination. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned, Mathalu Ahli Bayti ka Mathali Safina to Nuh. Man rakibaha naja. That my family are like the Ark of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam. Whoever embarks it and rides upon it, will be saved. He who neglects my family will be destroyed. And they said, Ashabi kan najum. My companions are like stars. Bi'ayyihim iqtadaytum ihtadaytum. Whichever star you follow, you will be guided. You can only get to your destination if you have a means of transport. That means of transport for me and you are the Ahlul Bayt and the love and honor for them. And without any guidance and direction, you will be wandering aimlessly like they are wandering during these days with no direction. You can only achieve direction when you look towards the stars for guidance. You need both in order to reach Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For when you come to Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam, la wajadullah tawwabur rahima, you will certainly find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala most merciful and most forgiving. You can't reach there without that. We are those, we don't take one and disrespect the other. Why, why are we creating this scenario and this image? It's not like that. Read, study the tarikh, read the history, read the stories. They honored them, they loved them, they respected them. They had great love amongst themselves. And it was shown when Sayyidina Uthman became the Khalifa and his house came under arrest. For 40 days, Sayyidina Uthman was under house arrest. Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu an, who reached in his 80s. Sayyidina Hassan and Hussein are how old now? 
they are in the early 20s they are a good age Sayyiduna Hassan and Hussein at that time in the 30s Balkay Sayyiduna Ali radiallahu an told them one instruction that the Khalifa Uthman's house is under arrest they have stopped water and food to him you have one job and one task Hassan and Hussein that you must go become bodyguards of his house you must let nobody enter into the house of the Khalifa if they had issues why would father send sons to the house of Sayyidina Uthman this is incorrect for those who create this narrative and image this is why it's important for us necessary for us that we show this love and respect for them both if we can shuffle forward more brothers are coming Dulushrif pariya Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina So we see that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam nurtured his grandsons. Sayyiduna Ali nurtured his sons. They grew up in the company of the best of people. The best men to walk on this earth. Sayyiduna Abu Bakr, Sayyiduna Umar, Sayyiduna Uthman, Sayyiduna Abdurrahman bin Awf, Sayyiduna Ubaidah, Abu, uh, Sayyiduna Abu Ubaidah bin Al-Jarrah, Sayyiduna Sa'ad bin Abi Waqqas, Sayyiduna Zubair, Sayyiduna Talha. They knew who these men were. These are the great legends amongst the sahaba the most senior of the companions Sayyidina Hassan and Hussein grew up in the company of these men they seen this they understood this and then when Sayyidina Ali radiallahu an was martyred he was killed Sayyidina Uthman was martyred Sayyidina Umar radiallahu an was martyred Sayyidina Ali was martyred the three out of the four khulafa were martyred and Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Abdurrahman ibn Muljim, this munafiq hypocrite, how he martyred Sayyidina Ali. Such is the greatness of the martyrdom of Mullah Murtaza radiallahu an, that his birth was in the vicinity of the Kaaba. He was born, he was given birth to in the vicinity of the Kaaba, according to the narration in the Mustadrak of Imam al Hakim. And he, we know, Ali minni wa ana min Ali. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us Ana madinatul ilmi wa aliyun babuha Man kuntu mawlahu fahadha Ali mawlahu That whoever I am his mawla Ali is his mawla Ali is from me and I am from Ali The anta akhi fi dunya wal akhira You are my brother in this world and the next You are with me Sayyidina Ali was very close to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Very close And this Sayyidina Ali radiallahu an Martyred on a Friday the 21st of Ramadan in the month of Ramadan Friday at the time of Fajr he was martyred when he was in sujood in the masjid leading Fajr what great martyrdom Friday best of days Ramadan best of months 21st odd night Allahu Akbar odd night search for Laylatul Qadr in the odd nights in the last 10 nights of Ramadan in the masjid, best of all places. Allah loves the masajid more than any place. At the time of Fajr, the best of prayers. And sajda in the best of positions. And martyrdom, the best of all deaths. To be granted the rank of martyrdom, shahadat, there's no death greater than this. Why? Allah says about the martyrs, وَلَا تَقُولُوا لِمَنْ يُقْتَلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَاتْ بَلَحْيَا وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ اللَّهَ وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ قُتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَاتَ بَالْأَحْيَاءِ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ يُرْزَقُونَ فَرِهِينَ بِمَا آتَاهُمُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ Allahu Akbar They're happy with what Allah gives Don't say they're dead Don't think they're dead Martyrs are alive He who dies in Allah's way He who dies doing the work of Allah Almighty In the way of Allah Almighty For the sake of Allah Almighty Allah says don't say they are dead They are not dead They are not dead They're alive they're alive but you can't understand their life that's why when somebody dies on the battlefield do you wash their body do you give them a ghusl no the sharia says don't give them any ghusl why let their blood flow from their bodies because on the day of judgment that blood will bear witness to his martyrdom and take him to paradise and then when we look at martyrdoms when you have 120 arrows in your back and body 
when your head is severed from your body Allahu Akbar and the blood is flowing your blessed body is trampled on by horses of Ibn Ziyad's army then what martyrdom can you bring forth like the martyrdom of the grandson of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as such that it rained the heavens were crying that under every stone that was turned from Iraq from Medina Munawwara to Bayt al-Maqdis there was blood found underneath it that you could hear the jinns crying there was sadness that befell the world that what martyrdom will we ever see Sayyidina Hussein radiallahu an he witnessed the martyrdom of Sayyidina Umar Sayyidina Uthman his father his brother was poisoned Sayyidina Hassan radiallahu anhum he grew and see all of this why did he was why was he shown all of this why did he long live long enough to see in preparation of his own martyrdom that I've seen it all you can't tell me that's why when he arrived in Karbala and I finished this it's a very long story go to YouTube type my name and you'll see it you listen to all of it when he arrived in Karbala just before he arrived there with his family his wives were with him his sons were with him his brothers were with him his stepbrothers were with him his cousins were with him his nephews were with him and his sister Sayyida Zainab was with him when they all arrived and they stopped and they were traveling from Medina Munawwara to Iraq. Remember, the people of Iraq wrote letters and said, Come, come to Iraq. We will take you on. Then they deserted him. They left him. When he arrived at a certain place and he stopped and he asked the people who lived local, Where are we? What is this land called? And they said, This place, this area is called Karbala. And he said, No, this land is not called Karbala. It's rather, it's called Karbun wabala'un In Arabic, karb means misfortune, sadness, difficulty. Bala means musibat, trial and tribulation. This land is not Karbala, rather this is a land of trial and tribulation. He said to his family, we will stop here now. Our journey will not continue any further from this point. And Sayyidina Hussein, he camped in Karbala during the early days of Muharram al-Haram on the seventh day water was stopped on the tenth day he was granted along with all of his family that were martyred martyrdom the women were spared the tents were burnt his body was trampled on a lot happened but when you have to stand against injustice oppression and tyranny every age needs a Hussein today Palestine needs a Hussein Yemen needs a Hussein Kashmir needs a Hussein. Today the Ummah is looking out where is the Hussein? Where is this great warrior who stands for Islam, for our rights, for our people? This, this is why Iqbal said, Qatle Hussein Asal me Marge Yazid hai Islam Zinda Hota hai Har Karbala Kebad. Wa akul kawli hadha astaghfirullah li walakum wa akhir da'waya an alhamdulillahi rabbil alam. Sorry, there's not enough time. I would have gone on and on and on. But khair, inshallah, next time. Jazakumullah khair. This is the first time I think I've been to this masjid. Allah reward. Uh, Junaid sahab. Muhammad Bilal. Muhammad Bilal sahab. And especially his son. His son who, who told him, get Imam Asim. Jazakumullah khair. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum.